Hello, welcome. I'm Commissar Mark and today we are going to take a look at another mechanic in C3, namely C3 Augustus. And that is going to be natives and how natives work. So natives are obstacles that are placed on some maps in the campaign and on lots of custom maps. And the native structures have three basic varieties. So on each given map you could have small native huts which only serve as blockers for your city so you need to pacify them or avoid them if you don't have access to mission posts which we'll touch upon a little later. There, they have a range of three tiles from them that they deny you construction. You can still build on this terrain but what is going to happen if you build on it is all the native huts on the map including the meeting hut as well as all the small ones are gonna spawn hostile natives that are gonna go towards the offending structure that's built on this red terrain and try to remove it. On the way to it, they might encounter your walkers or buildings and they might smash it, especially if it's aqueducts, which could cause catastrophic damage to your city. Um, sometimes what happens, if there is a native that's pacified already and you offend another one, it could still spawn the hostile natives from that hut. So just be aware of that, if the map is covered with natives, it could be very important to keep this native overlay here on quick access so you check if you are not building on any native terrain that they claim as their own. Then another thing that the natives have is native field, which this doesn't actually impact anything, it's just a blocker. It's, it acts like if there was an impassable rock or a piece of cliff, this would act the same way and natives actually do not care about it. Um, if there is a, just a field somewhere, it will not exert the field of denial around it. And so only the native, small native huts and the meeting huts will actually exert this influence. With the native meeting huts, it is six tiles arranged in each direction uh, for the native meeting hut. And sometimes if the meeting hut is placed on a high place, like on a cliff, it could happen that it's not very clear how far it ranges. So you can count it. It's six tiles, six tiles away from it. Now, um, I'm gonna quickly set up a basic settlement here in order to show you some of the basic mechanics in practice. So now with the basic settlement set up, I've also taken the liberty to set up a pottery production because it is one of our exports and it's important to explain in order to touch upon the native meeting hut and its function. <clears throat> Something to talk about uh, as well is if there is a custom map that um, the author has forgotten to place a native meeting hut on the map itself, it means that all the actual small little natives will not care about the zone of control they exert since they will no longer spawn these native walkers. Because what happens with the natives is they spawn walkers constantly that are gonna path towards this meeting hut. If they cannot reach it, um, they still will spawn and they will still be threatened. So if someone doesn't want you to trade with the natives but wants to have the natives be a threat, they'll enclose the native meeting hut on like a small little island that's unreachable and then uh, the natives will still get aggressive but uh, you can no longer trade with them. How that works is so you can pacify the natives as I mentioned, uh, you will need to use a mission post for that. It costs 100 denarii and employs 20 workers, which could be substantial. Um, let's place one down and um, it works, it acts as regular walkers, but the quirk about it is it's walker. It has four tiles of range from the road. We can actually show it so that you can clearly see I'm not lying to you here. So if we place it so that it's four tiles away, so this is four tiles. And if we place it here, it, the structure itself, if it's placed on the red terrain, it doesn't matter. It doesn't offend the natives, so you can place it in that village without any issues. And so if we just keep this road simple like this, you'll see that this should pacify this hut without any issues once the walker spawns. With regular prefects and engineers, it's two tiles away from the road for its effect to happen. And yeah, we can see that this is no longer being threatened because otherwise it would range three into here. So this hut is now safe. <clears throat> what we want to do now is usually the native huts will have like a very squiggly road layout which is not something you might want and with the knowledge of four tiles away we could actually now go ahead and place down our own road to pacify lots of these natives without many issues just make sure that the walker is there and when you make such a layout usually you don't want to touch it later because if it if the walker starts to go a certain direction and stops pacifying all the natives it could result in catastrophic failure uh, where the natives will all get aggressive once more you can see now now it's all safe now if uh, the native meeting hut has been pacified 
and you also have a trade partner in which case this would be Tarentum which would buy our pottery we can open that up um, the natives will also buy the same goods as your other trade routes will buy from you if there is a warehouse that accepts land traders in them and so in this case Tarentum is a land trade route and would buy pottery 25 units and I've started to produce some but we don't have a warehouse yet and so we can use this if we place the warehouse very close to the mission post we maximize the yield of it because how that works is each month or two the carter from the native meeting hut will spawn and seek the nearest warehouse that has tradable resources and then he will go there buy a couple of units usually three or four units of goods and then leave back to his hut and then spawns again the faster he can get him to his destination and back the faster he can spawn once more and so it's if you want to maximize it, you want to place the warehouse as close as possible. Don't obstruct any of the sides of the hut. Sometimes what happens with this is the native will spawn on the slower side. I've seen them spawn on the top side. It depends on the map size and the native meeting hut's placement as well. So just keep in mind, you want to keep open space. If there's a lot of extra space and we all see him spawn from a different side, we might actually um, place a highway to speed his movement up. That's why I left some empty spaces around here. And we also need to trigger our trade. So let's say that we export pottery. Of course, the traders will not do that. So if we have extra labor, which we do, we can just spam extra workshops. Each native meeting hut, if used efficiently, can actually trade with you uh, substantially. It can buy a lot more than a simple quota of a single trade route if you do it um, well. Now, the traders have bought one piece, but the native has bought three pieces. Let's just let it run again, I missed it a little bit. So there's a piece of pottery now, and let's see where the native trader spawns. And he spawns from right there, and he goes immediately into the warehouse and back. And so he's ready for another delivery. And so this way, this is called printing money, basically, in terms of um, community banter, because it's so absurdly good that uh, you can really make lots and lots of money, and the natives will just keep trading with you. It's not gonna get affected by the quota, they don't have a quota, they just as fast as you can get them to the warehouse and back is basically your limit. Uh, one bad thing is um, they need to have a warehouse that's also set as available to traders. If it's not, then the natives will not come here, I don't think. Let's test it out really quick. Yeah, there are goods, but the natives will not go there now. Um, and so this is important if the native hut is like in a very bad position for your trade caravans to go, you might not want that um, to happen for obvious reasons. But on some maps you can kind of work around that and usually the huts will be placed in convenient locations. You can also make a specific warehouse for that specific hut and then uh, the traders will only sometimes travel there, not always, but still it's not great as we talked about trade caravans before, it's really important to keep them optimized and this would not be very well optimized. But I think that's gonna be it about the natives. Something to say is on desert maps it's usually very hard to spot natives. In this uh, central terrain it's actually quite simple but it's good when you load up into a map to just quickly tap through native overlay and just see if there are any natives uh, blocking any important sites. A lot of uh, map makers like to use them to guard certain resource locations or fertile land or things like that or even invasion point areas to indicate uh, where the enemies are gonna come from. So I hope this was at least a little bit interesting. If you have any questions about the natives let me know. Maybe I forgot something, not sure. But this is going to be a very short one. Thanks for watching and see you around. Bye.